All right, so just considering the current administration's change in policies regarding international trade, I thought it'd be relevant to have this claim, which is that protectionist policies negatively impact a nation, citizens, and economy. And I want to be clear, I'm not talking to specifics of the current climate because that will take a long time. There's a lot of extraneous factors. But um, let's just jump right into it. So my first point is that, in general, the rise of tariffs or taxes levied on you know, imported goods will result in two primary mechanisms of consumers, basically us, um, losing ability to purchase things. So the first one is obvious. Uh, let's just say, like for food, for an example, for food. If food is taxed, then either for us we cannot buy it, or we choose to turn to domestic options, right? So that's the first mechanism. We can't pay for more expensive foreign goods. But what happens is as these foreign competitors either raise prices or leave the market, there are fewer suppliers, fewer domestic competitors. And it's pretty generally accepted. I mean, it's supported by this, but it's pretty generally accepted as an economic concept that uh, as demand for a product stays the same and supply goes away, prices increase. So really, it's like a double whammy on consumers. And just to... Uh, kind of solidify this concept, I went the other direction and found a statistic from the White House archives saying that free trade agreements, which basically reduce trade barriers, allow economies of scale, product competition, and variety to um, increase purchasing power for the nation by $150 billion, which per household for individual families would be around $1,300, which is rather significant. And so I just want to move on from there and say that um, oftentimes tariffs are a ways to protect a specific domestic industry, right? So an example that I'll be using, and it actually is happening today right now, would be a steel. And so in Francois' study of Bush's 2002 steel tariff policies, they found that though there was a small impact on that industry, other industries that are tangentially related, such as um, those that relied on steel, like machine manufacturers, uh, equipment manufacturers, car manufacturers, plane manufacturers, all experienced a relatively significant impact. And so what that means is as cost of goods sold increases for these companies, they have to find a way to shore up the bottom line. A lot of times that comes at the cost of downsizing. And so that same study found that more American workers lost their job in 02, 200,000, to higher steel prices than the total number employed by the United States steel industry in that December, 187,000. So we find that really, not only does it not significantly vitalize that industry, it draws away. It's not like they're naturally creating revenue. They're really pulling away and they're really creating problems for other industries. So that being said, I just want to conclude and say that on balance, protectionist policies generate inefficiency for the economy and for consumers, and really what benefits that are created are really borrowed from other industries. And I also want to add again that, um, for example, for current events, like if this, you know, when you look at current events like China's trade war, it's hard to include elements like intellectual property. It's hard to consider like the power for political, you know, the struggle for political <coughs> power. So this should really just be a way to contextualize your understanding. It's not really a definite statement on what's going on these days. So thank you for listening. I hope you learned something.